Welcome. In this video, we're going to go over setup and do a solo playthrough of Nemesis, the board game. Down at the table, this board is the Nemesis ship. We are going to wake from a hypersleep in here. We usually walk around, check our engines, make sure two of those three are working, then make our way up front to make sure our coordinates are going to Earth, all while trying to complete an objective. Oh, and survive because there's a lot of alien intruders on the ship trying to kill us. So that leisurely walk is off. We're going to go running through here panicking, trying to make sure conditions are in place to meet our objective as we are on a time limit before our ship is going to make a jump. So like I said, we're trying to survive, either getting the ship to make sure we're going to the right spot or jumping off in some of these space pods. Might remind you of a movie called Aliens. Um, so for setup, board is dual sided. We want these arrows up here for the easier side of the board, if you believe such a thing in this game. So the rest of setup in the rooms in here, they're labeled with a one or two. We're going to take the two tiles, give them a shuffle and place those on top of those two locations. You'll have some left over that go back to the box. Then we're going to do the same thing with the one locations. Then we have some exploration tokens with question marks on the back. Randomize all these and then put one on each of these tiles. And we'll have some of those left over too. They go back to the box. We're gonna put our destination marker on B, then take our coordinates and give them a shuffle. Basically they're showing where we end up. So if it stayed on B, we'd be going to deep space. We wanna to go to earth. So all these are gonna have different locations on them. So we'll give these a shuffle. Place one there, return the others. Then our engines, for each engine, they're either going to have it's working or damaged. Of course, if we want to go to Earth or not blow the ship up, we need to check those and make sure the working is in the right spot. And the damaged on the bottom. So we'll shuffle these and place those back down. And we have our time marker on 15. So that's the Nemesis board set up. For an intruder board, it's just going over what our symbols mean on some tokens that'll be popping up. Eggs in the nest, one of these tokens or tiles is gonna be the nest. The game starts with five eggs in that spot. And then intruder weaknesses, if we do a figure, investigate a character corpse, intruder egg and an intruder carcass, we'll unlock some weaknesses to help us fight against these intruders. So we'll put the eggs out there and take our intruder cards. Like I said, they're gonna have different weaknesses to help us in their fight. Give these a shuffle and then put one on each of those spaces. We're turning the others to the box. And we need to make an intruder bag. Now the game does come with a nice bag, but I like bigger bags for my bigger hands. So we'll get that. We're gonna put one blank for larva, a creeper token, the queen, and three adults in the bag, and then one more adult for each player. Then we need to pick our character. So in the base game, we have a pilot, scout, mechanic, captain, soldier, and a scientist. And we are gonna draft those. So we've got some draft cards here. Give this a shuffle. We're gonna look at two and then choose one. So we've got the scientist or a mechanic. I think I am going to go with the mechanic. Have not played either one of these yet. I have tried the captain solo and the soldier solo, and it did not turn out well for either one of those. See if the mechanic has some better luck. So on the board, it's gonna give you space to put your 
draw deck, discarded areas. You can carry two heavy items, so left hand and right hand. Goes over our basic actions, spinning a card to do it, move to the next tile, shoot, melee attack, pick up a heavy object, trade items, which won't happen in solo, or crafting in items by getting rid of two cards with those symbols to make an antidote, taser, flamethrower, or a Molotov cocktail. We can spend two cards from our hand for careful movement. So that comes in instead of rolling to see where noise is around one of our rooms, we can choose where the noise goes through. And we've got a spot to mark if we've made a signal, if we've been slimed, and then damage works its way down from one light wound. We go to two light wounds. Then we go down to a serious wound card. If we get three serious wounds, we didn't make it. So we start in this room with a corpse. We're also going to get two objectives to start with. Once a miniature comes on the board, we have to choose one. So we've got a cleanup crew. We've got to send the signal and the nest must have been destroyed or send the signal and the ship must have been destroyed with us living through it, of course. Then cutting off the head, send the signal and the queen must have been killed. That's going to be a tough one or send the signal and the ship must be destroyed. So basically we want to destroy the ship and I feel like a mechanic should be able to figure out how to do that. So we'll place those there for now. So there is a help sheet going over all the rooms. So we know all room ones are on the table. So we've got an armory, comms room, emergency room, evacuation sections go to A and B. So up here, section A and B. I think that's going to be my plan since we want to blow the ship up. Laboratory to analyze objects. So if we take the corpse there or different things, we can find out some weaknesses. Generator starting a self-destruct sequence. So you can see where I'm going. I want that thing started so we can get it. First, we need to find a way to get in here and then start that self-destruct sequence. Nest, storage, and surgery. Got some special rooms, the engine, so we can check to make sure if they're working or not working. The hibernatorium, which is where we sleep and wake up. The cockpit for checking coordinates. And the additional room twos going over what all they do and not all those are on the board. So the mechanic does start with an item that is going to be a energy weapon, sawed off shotgun. Only use that when we're fighting, and it is a heavy item, so it can carry two. Comes in with two ammo. Unmodified rolls of that symbol are treated as double damage, basically. So I'll just put that there with two ammo on it. Then we have some quest items we can potentially get. Spinning a card, activate this item in the storage room to get a plasma torch or flashlights, discard an energy charge to activate this item. So those are potential things to get. Then our starting action cards. We'll give those a shuffle. Now around the board, I have other stacks of cards. I'll shuffle those as needed. So we have different items. Our constructed items we can get by combining two of these items together, if they're the right ones. Actions, all these are contaminations that we'll use our special scanner equipment to see if we've been infected or not. And serious wounds, and then attack cards. And I've got tokens off the side of the board, along with a bunch of nasty old intruders. So basically we are going to have 15 rounds to play to meet our objectives or one of those objectives and not die. So player phase, we're gonna draw up to five cards. Move the first player token, multiplayer game, perform actions. We're not swapping that off. We do need to keep track of this in case there's a fire. Because at the end of our turns, if we're in a room with a fire token, we take a damage. So we get two actions, repeat step three until we decide to pass. Then the event phase, move the time track and the self-destruct if we get that started. Intruder attack, if we're in a space with an intruder, they're gonna attack us. If intruders are in a space with fire, they take damage, resolve an event card, which I have over here, and then intruder bags. 
we're gonna draw a token out of that. And depending on what that token is, this came in a different set, but depending on that token, different things are gonna happen. Basically you're rolling for noise or putting in more eggs or intruders in our bag. So that's the basic turn. So we are ready to get started. So destroying the nest means we need to first find the nest and kill all these eggs. The queen, I don't see me killing the queen on my own. So I'm thinking more of the send the signal and destroy the ship, which means we need to find the comms room and at least one of those evacuation chambers and the generator to start a self-destruct sequence. So all those are the one spaces. Or another way to blow up the ship is to make sure two of these are in the damaged position. So maybe that's where we'll start. All right, so five cards. Pyrotechnics, search, ingenuity, fast repairs, and computer skills. So this is how many cards we need to discard to use it. If we can be in combat or not in combat. Open a open and close one door in a corridor, connect it to the room you're in, or if you're in a room with a computer, use its room action without paying its cost. Fast repairs, discard a malfunction marker from the room you're in. So that's these little things or repair, break the engine. Ingenuity, discard the malfunction marker from a room you're in or break in, repair, break an engine. Or craft an item, you can use any yellow item as that item. Searching, reduce the item counter by one, draw two cards of the same color. We'll see that how that works when we find a room. And then pyrotechnics, discard any item to place a fire marker in a room you're in. So another way to get the ship to blow up is having five fire tokens, or not five, but nine, have to place your ninth one, or have to place your ninth malfunction token. So we can start a fire in a room or get rid of a fire in a room. What we're gonna do is discard a card, pick up a heavy object. So that's gonna be two objects on us. Next, we're gonna discard two cards for careful movement. We're gonna move into this room. So looking at that, that shows how many searchable items are in there. When you're playing solo, you have that rounded up and that symbol means we've just been slimed, which is not good. What that means is when we roll this dice, typically that means we didn't make any noise. Now, when we roll that, it means this symbol which means every corridor around the room we're in is gonna get a noise token, unless we can take a bath or change our clothes. All right. So we found hatch control system, lock and lock and escape pod. All right, that seems good. So it's a white room, takes two cards for us to do that action. This means like I said, that token had a four on it. We have it in a solo game. So we can search twice in here and this symbol goes there. And as we search, we'll take that down until we can't search anymore. And since I spent two cards to go in here, I can choose where the noise token goes. I'm gonna choose here the way that typically works. If you just spend one to move, you roll a die. Depending on that number, that's where the token goes. And in this case, four would be the technical corridor, which is basically the duct system. So that's attached to a lot of different rooms, which could trigger bad things happening a lot more often. So if you spend two cards, you get to decide where your token goes. Then what I'm gonna do is perform the room action. Two cards to unlock the escape pod. All right, we are out of action. So then in the event phase, move the time track or and self-destruct track if that had already started. Uh, if there was an intruder in our room, they would attack. Fire damage is for intruders in with fire. We take ours after we do our two actions. Resolve an event card. So we'll go ahead and give this a shuffle. And the event, what we're looking at here is these symbols up here correlate to intruders. They would move through corridor one if they weren't in a spot with us, but there's none on the board. 
Bulkheads open, open all doors except destroy doors, has no effect, so it just gets discarded. Then intruder bag development. So we're going to take a token out of the bag. It is the queen. And that means turn this token to the bag. If there's a character in the nest room, place the queen miniature there and resolve an encounter, which is basically them fighting. If there are no characters in the nest, add an egg token on the intruder board. So this goes back in the bag. And the queen just laid another egg. So that's the invent phase, going pretty quick. So drawing five cards, it's gonna be the rest of our hand here. And I'm going to pitch two cards to open or unlock that. We'll get rid of the rest in interruption. So discard this card to cancel any action performed by another player in the room you're in. So in solo game, that's pretty much all that's useful for. Resting, scan all contamination cards in your hand, remove all uninfected cards. If any of the cards were infected, follow the infection procedure. So we are planning to escape. Then I'm gonna pitch two cards for careful movement to go into this room. So it's gonna be malfunctioning. We've got one search on it. And it is the surgery, perform a surgery here. Put the one there, and we cannot do a surgery until we fix the malfunction. And we will put the noise there. We'll go ahead and pass, keeping this card in our hand. So going through the event phase, move that down the track. No self-destruct, no intruder, no fire, event. Nothing to move, flammable compounds. Place a fire marker in the hibernatorium. If it's already on fire, place a fire marker in each neighboring room. Fire does not spread through closed doors or technical corridors. All right. So that could potentially spread, interesting. Then our intruder bag. We found an adult, which means turn this token to the bag, perform a noise roll. We got a three, so get noise here. It would have been a two, we would have removed the tokens and then brought out a beast, but we got lucky. So back to our turn. We've got one card in hand. We need to draw more, so we shuffle these, getting four cards. One, two, three, four. All right, technical corridors. So use a room with a technical corridor entrance. Uh, move your character to any other room with a technical corridor entrance. You must pass after this action. Fast repairs, computer skills, and ingenuity. All right, we're gonna quietly move or carefully move to there, making a noise go into this space. We're gonna do some fast repairs. Repair, break the engine in the engine room you're in. So that means we get to look at these and place them back in any order. So it was in working condition. The awesome mechanic we are, we're gonna get it damaged. So if you're playing multiple players, you'd keep this information hidden. But uh, we all know what's going on. So we've got that one damaged, which will blow the ship up if two of these three are damaged. Then we're gonna push ourselves, discarding two cards to go this direction, making some noise. So we're gonna have a search of two and we're placing a door through the corridor we just came through. And we found evacuation section B. So now we have a way to get to this area. And we had, what, two areas to search. Now that was risky because we have no cards in hand, but we'll see if I pay for that. So moving the time track, no self-destruct, no intruders, fire damage, there's nothing in there to take damage, event card, short circuit. Place a malfunction marker on each explored yellow room with a computer. We only have green rooms and white rooms explored. 
Remove this event from the game and reshuffle the events deck. All right, so that flammable compounds could be coming back to us soon. So these get shuffled back in. And then we go to the intruder bag. Another adult means we're rolling for noise. This is where it could be bad. We got a one. So that's noise in that direction. All right, so zero cards, we're drawing five. Our techniques, interruption, rest, search, and demolition. For our first action, zero card searching. Reduce the item count counter by one. Draw two item cards of the same color as the room we're in. One a white room that allows us to draw from any of the three stacks. Drawing two, picking one, and discard the other to the bottom of its deck. So we're going to go from red. Because with the noise popping up, we might be fighting some soon. So we're going to look at the top two. We've got a one-use only grenade. Choose a room with an intruder, the one you are in or a neighboring one. Chosen intruder suffers two injuries. All other characters and intruders in targeted room, including you, suffer one injury and serious wound. Or we get an energy charge. Fully load ammo and one energy weapon. Um... Neither one of them take up a heavy space. I think I'm gonna take the energy charge. And the search said that goes on the bottom of the deck. Then I'm gonna do some careful movement. Two cards going this way, making noise in that area. And I'm not brave enough to take a look at that. So we're going to hold on to these two cards and pass her turn. So move the track down. No intruder, no fire damage event. Explosion. Each character with a larva token on their character board, which would be these. Sometimes they pop out and attach to you. Um, each character with a larva on the character board dies. Uh, place a creeper in their room. Every character draws four cards from their deck and scans all drawn contamination cards. They have at least one infected card. Put a larva on that. Discard all drawn cards. So that's going to make us draw four cards and then discard those four cards. But we haven't been infected, so nothing for us to worry about there. So one, two, three, four. We're looking at these. Hey, look, we're not infected and they get discarded. Then intruder bag. An adult, we're rolling for noise. We don't want to have an option except for to bring in a monster. That's not good. All right, so we would place another one there, which means we clear all the noise. We are going to draw an intruder from the bag. And it's a little baby. So put a little larva in with us. So the number on the back, that's checking our hand size. As long as we have cards in our hand equal to or more than that, we do not get a surprise attack on us. So we are good there. All right, so back to our next turn. We're drawing three more cards. We've got search, technical corridors, and fast repairs. That's nice to have. We need to shoot something. That's a basic action. We get to pitch one card and use a shoot action, which is going to be search. So we're going to use an ammo, which allows us to roll one of our dice. So blank does nothing, and basically for these things, all it takes is one hit, and all the other symbols, it's going to do a damage to it. So action one, that actually did two damage to it. So it's blown up. Now we're going to do fast repairs, discard, or repair break the engine room you're in. 
Take a look. Hey, it was already damaged. Now we know it's damaged for good. So this ship is going to blow up when it jumps. And I don't want to speak too soon. Oh yes, when a miniature pops on the board, we have to pick one of these to keep. I mean, but we still need to send the signal. So basically we're doing the last one, send the signal and destroy the ship. So we need to find the communications room. So we're going to be a cleanup crew. That's our objective we need to do. Or send the signal and destroy the nest. So we are looking for the comms room and then either find the other one to evacuation A or get back to this spot. So we're going to spin two cards to move. Choosing noise over there. Oh, fire in that room. So this is where the actions matter. We just took two actions here. This is our first of two actions there. We've got one search. Ooh, the fire control system is on fire. Nice. So my options are is to discard this to move away, make any noise or stay there and take a damage. It's just gonna be one light wound and that's gonna be the option I take. So we're passing. We're gonna take a light wound from the fire. Move the time track. No more damage, no intruders, event card. Bulkheads open, open all doors. Shake these up and get a token. And that is going to be remove it and put in an adult in there. And we'll draw four more cards. So into ingenuity and three more cards. Computer skill, search, and interruption. All right, we're moving slow. We might have to pick up that pace here eventually. Gonna go into this room. So it's gonna be malfunctioning. We've got one search. And it's a monitoring room. Check a room and exploration token. Interesting. I'll put the noise behind us. And it's malfunctioning. We're gonna go ahead and search. Reduce the counter to zero. It's a red room. So two cards. So an energy charge or an add to an energy weapon. Add two, mo two ammo to one of your energy weapons. From now on, this weapon has plus two capacity. Yep, we're gonna keep that. Putting this on the bottom. And from what I understand, once the, we attach that, we just we automatically get the extra two ammo. Then we're gonna go running. We'll move into this room. So that's gonna have two searches and a malfunction. Found the armory. Recharge your energy weapon. Rolling for noise. And since we're slimed, that would be great, but unfortunately, that means we get noise in every space. All right, passing your turn. That goes. No self-destruct, no intruders, no fire, vent card. Damage, put a malfunction marker in each room with an adult intruder, breeder, or queen. So fortunately, we don't have any of those on the board, but this is probably gonna bring one in. That, just remove it from the bag and add an adult. 
All right, our next turn. We've got this, we're gonna draw four cards. One, two, three, four. Demolition, Pyrotechnics, Rest, and Fast Repairs. Spinning two cards to move into that space carefully. Down the emergency room to treat her wounds. We're slimed again, which doesn't matter. We've got two searches on there. And choosing noise in front of us. All right, we're gonna probably go start a fight here. So spending one card for movement. Ooh. Yep, so we're gonna have one search and that's going to put the noise and all the other areas, which is our room up here also. Found the other evacuation section. And now we're rolling for noise, which doesn't matter because we're gonna find something. So it's going into space three right here. So we remove noise from all our adjacent areas. We have two cards in hand. And we see what's gonna come out. And ooh, four. It's an adult. We have less than four, so it's getting a free attack on us. So here he comes. So go to our intruder, intruder attack cards, give these a shuffle, and hope we get lucky and it misses. Hey, we did get lucky. So first thing we're looking for, so this is a health. Whenever we go to attack something, basically the larva and the creepers have one health. Everything else, you don't know how strong they are. Um, so that tells you how much damage is on them. If you've got that much on them, you've killed them. If not, they're still around. These symbols here let you know which intruders are attacking us. So in this case, it would be the breeder and the queen. That's just an adult. And down here is what it would have done. So all characters in the room who have at least two serious wounds die. Oh, goodness. Typically it takes three serious wounds plus another either light or another wound to kill us. All other characters in this room suffer a serious wound. So since it didn't attack, nothing happened there. So we'll just discard that. We are going to shoot him. Spending a token here, rolling a die. That symbol there means we damaged an adult. I can't reach, I'll just put that token on there. We'll flip to see if we killed it. We didn't, that's all we're looking at, the damage on it. Then we're gonna spend another card and shoot it. And not do anything to it. Still not dead. Or actually, we wouldn't have flipped that since it didn't actually hit. All right, that did not go well for us. So we're moving this, so what this means is we can go in this room and go to sleep. Probably not a good thing to do if the place is on fire. Self-destruct, go. intruder attack. It does, it's gonna bite us. If the character has two serious wounds, they die. If not, they suffer one serious wound. So we'll give this a shuffle. All right, our hand hurts. The cost of all your item actions is increased by one. So I believe this is an item. Yes, starting item. All right, no fire damage, event card. Hunt, move every adult intruder not in combat to a neighboring room. So he's not moving because he's already in combat with us. Then we are going to 
Make a noise roll. Getting a four, which triggers in here. Back to our turn, drawing five cards. First, we get a search, then shuffling. Technical corridors, pyrotechnics, interruption, and fast repairs. We're gonna to attempt to shoot this guy. Their last piece of ammo. Doing nothing. So now we're just gonna escape. So we're gonna discard a card to run this direction. And before we actually make it, we do an intruder attack. So it's claw attack, this character suffers two light wounds and gets a contamination card. So two light wounds, we've already got one, so we get one. Then our second means we're getting another serious wound. Ooh, yes, and shooting a gun would have been an extra card. So the other serious wound, her leg hurts, cause of your escape movement. <laughs> so we escape to hurt our leg, makes sense. Then we'll see what happens to us in here. So it's got one search and a malfunction. Engine control room, so we can check the status of the engines from here. Oh yeah, so we're running screaming, so noise roll. Area one. And I'm a little scared. We're going to end our turn keeping those two cards. Pass time. No intruder attacks, no fire damage. Event card. Adults are moving to area four, which means he's going into the ductwork and leaving the game, which means the damage we did goes away. And this token goes back in the bag. All right, then lurking. Remove from the board all intruders which are not in a room with a character. Put their respective tokens into the intruder bag. All right, so basically what we just did. Then we'll see what happens here. See if he comes back. Ooh. So that's the queen token. She's going to lay another egg. Making lots of little babies. Then we're going to draw three cards. One, two, three. Ingenuity, search, and rest. Oh yes, we should have a contamination card. Don't believe I shuffled that stack yet. Not that I know what those cards are. All right, we're going to discard a malfunction marker in the room we're in. Discard two cards for careful movement. We're gonna be putting our noise there. So it's malfunctioning, one search. And we found the comms room so we can send the signal. Chances are we're about to get attacked again. All right, we're going to end our turn, see how this goes for us. Marker. No self-destruct, no intruders, no fire. Sent to prey, place a noise marker in every corridor connected to a room containing a character with a slime marker. Except corridors that already have noise. Then something tells me we're going to roll for noise. Area two, which is up here. Let's see what kind of beast we get. It's gonna be an adult. Bringing a different one this time. 
Oh, I forgot to look on the back. It's a four. So surprise attack. Does this kill us? Character gets a slime marker and a contamination card. So we're not dead. Just probably not going to end well. Oh, should have used that to fill my gun up earlier. That was a mistake. All right, we're drawing two cards, plus one more. Interruption. All right, so I feel like since this doesn't have that symbol in it, I can use it in combat. So I'm gonna, it's an item. So I have to discard two cards to fully load an energy weapon. This gets discarded. So two cards, four ammo. And now I'm wondering if the item actions, since I'm doing a basic action, if using that costs two. I'm thinking I probably robbed myself out of cards last time. I think it only one takes one. So we're gonna shoot. Which does one damage. Check to see if it's dead. It's not. We're going to shoot. And that counts as doing two damage. And we killed it. I'm going to put a carcass token there. Then we're going to end her turn with one card in hand. So that goes down. Vent card, malfunction, marker in the explored room with the lowest room number. And shuffle this card back into the events deck. Well, let's see, four, three, two, one. All right. And this gets shuffled back in. And assume we're going to roll for some noise because we're going into the bag. Yep, rolling for noise. Let's put the token there. Ending the turn, we're drawing four more cards. I'm gonna spend two cards to use that action to send out a signal. We are gonna use technical corridors, using room with a technical corridor entrance, which we have. Move your character to any other room with a technical corridor entrance. You must pass after this action. So we're gonna go into that spot. And then I'm going to roll for noise. We're going in that room, so we get a one. And we were forced to pass our turn after playing that card. So we move time. No intruders, no fire, event card. Flammable compounds, place a fire marker in the hibernatorium. It's already on fire, place a fire marker in each neighboring room. Fire does not spread through closed doors or technical corridors. So that room's on fire, 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 and fire. And then we're back into the bag and hoping not to roll noise. So come on, queen. Eh, roll for noise. Three or four, three or four. Okay. So ending her turn, I'm gonna draw four cards. Ooh, contamination, contamination, pyrotechnics. And one more. I think we're gonna die from an infection here. Actually, we're gonna search. Knocking that down. So we've got a recon drone. 
Check one unexplored room, tile, and look at its token or smoky grenade. Use in the room you're in, all other characters in the room discard an action card. You move to the neighboring room and intruders don't attack you during that movement. Guess we'll keep that. And this goes to the bottom. And unfortunately, to go into one of these, we have to make a roll check, which we need a four on. Probably not going to happen, which means we'd have these left in our hands and not shoot anything. So I can't do anything on my turn here. So we're going to discard all our cards. Actually, we're going to keep one. We'll keep the pyro card. So after we pass, we can get rid of contamination. So I'm just going to have to risk it. I assume I'm going to have a alien burst in my belly. So that moves. Vent card. It's going to be a hunt. Move every adult, not in combat. So nothing happens. Something's going to happen here, though. Make a noise roll. Which is going to put noise up here. So we start another round, drawing four cards. Computer skills, search, and ingenuity. Well, we've got to clear the board, so we're going to spend two to try to make it to an escape hatch. So we've got to try to enter an escape hatch. You may perform this action only if any escape pod in the section is unlocked, has at least one empty space, make a noise roll. If an intruder appears in this room, your attempt to enter fails. To resolve your noise roll, if no intruder has reached the room, place your character in one of the spots and then we can leave. But, ooh, wait, one doesn't enter. Let me make sure this is right. There's an intruder in a neighboring room. Move it to this room. If there are no intruders. Place a noise marker in each corridor connected to this room that does not already have a noise marker in it. So, with that, we made it to the escape pod and we are getting out of there. So that means the game is basically over. So we go to the end of the game. So we need to fulfill our objective and survive. End of the game. The game ends when one of the following happens. Uh, the time marker goes to the end. Self-destructor or if the last non-hibernator character on the ship dies, hibernator uses the escape pod. So then the game has gone. Checking the engines. We know the engines are going to fail. Ooh, big time. So the nemesis blows up. So... Our objective, we sent the signal and the ship was destroyed. We still need to survive though. So coordinates check, where was it headed? It was headed to Venus, but it didn't make it. Contamination check. Each living character, either asleep or escape pod, checks their cards. Use the scanner to check. There's at least one infected card or lava on the player board. That player shuffles all their cards, both action and contamination, to create a new action deck. Then draws the top four cards. If there's at least one contamination card, infected or not, the character dies. If there are none, they are lucky to survive. So we're hoping for luck here. So going through our cards here. See if I can position this so it can be red in there. All right, so you do have to, I don't, okay, there you can almost see it. So that says, and it's none of those are infected. So we got lucky with that one. I think you can see it there. So that one is good. So we were, were we lucky with this one? Hey, we actually were not infected. So unless I missed a roll, like I said, I'm unsure about 
If using a gun is considered an item action or if we're using the basic action, which is not an item. I know the first time I went through there, I counted it as needing two cards to use it, but I don't think it actually does. So let me know if I did anything wrong, if someone should have died. I did not expect it to go this well from my previous play, but I think this guy may have survived or maybe he'll just live to die another day. So either way, I hope that at least showed you the basics of how this game is played in solo mode. I think it's gonna be a lot more fun multiplayer. And as always, I hope you enjoyed this video. So please click on the like button below and be sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching.